Just say you're gonna. Good afternoon. I am calling the hearing of the Assembly Education Committee to order. This will be a subcommittee because we do not yet, as I look around, have a quorum, so we will wait on calling the roll. Uh, but thank you for being here today. Um, we have 22 bills on file today. Two, bu two bills have been pulled. They are AB 1206 and AB 1426. We have four bills on consent, and those bills on consent are AB 496, Mr. Rendon, AB 943, Mr. Allen, AB 1064, Mr. Hernandez, and AB 1206, uh, with amendments recommended in the committee analysis. We have a very long agenda today, and we need to limit testimony to two witnesses per side and two, witness, two uh, minutes to each witness. So we'll, two witnesses, two minutes for each witness. Beyond those two, uh, other witnesses may state their name and affiliation and position on the bill before the committee. Uh, we hear bills in sign-in order, and we're ready for our first author. Uh, sitting before us is Mr. Frazier. Mr. For Frazier, come forward, please. <clears throat> Mr. Frazier, you may begin when you're ready. and in its more severe forms will qualify a student for special education, special accommodations, or extra support services. The International Dyslexia Association estimates that as many as 15 to 20 percent of the population has some of the symptoms of dyslexia, including slow or inaccurate reading, poor spelling, poor writing, or mixing up similar words. Not all of these will qualify for special education, but they are likely to struggle with many aspects of academic learning and are likely to benefit from systematic ex explicit instruction in reading, writing, and language. I would really like to thank the committee for working with us on the bill and accept the committee's suggestions, uh, the suggested amendments uh, to narrow the bill as described on page four through page six of the analysis. Mr. Chair, I have to commend your, your committee staff for the willingness to work through this process, and I thank you also for your thoughtfulness moving forward. Although dyslexia is one condition listed in the federal and state definition of a specific learning disability, and federal law states that a specific learning disability is a disorder in a psychological process, it does not include a phonological uh, processing deficit, which is a hallmark for dyslexia. When school districts review assessment data for, for a given student, school personnel look for visual and auditory processing deficits, but often ignore evidence of phonological deficits because visual and auditory deficits are specified in the above definition. The amendment will ensure that phonological processing deficit is included in that definition. The second part of the, uh, that addresses the need for an evidence-based, multisensory, direct, explicit, structured, and sequential approach to reme remediating students with dyslexia. Current law, AB 3040, SPEER, enacted in 1990, actually requires the California Department of Education to develop such program deadline, or guidelines. This amendment would require such a project again with the committee's recommendation that it meets the uh, requirements of dissemination of the guidelines and the CDE would be required to post them on its website. The guidelines also identify which symptoms, such as letter res reversals, are a normal part of growth and development. Require that the guidance regarded instruction focus on an instructional approach which is evidence-based, multi-sensory, 
direct, explicit, structured, and sequential, but limit the scope to dyslexia and not other specific learning disabilities or related disorders, and require the completion of the guidelines by a specific date. With me today, I have testifying in support Dr. Kelly Sandman Hurley, co-founder of the Dyslexia Training Institute, and Holly Snyder, a teacher and a parent of a child with dyslexia. And I know that you had mentioned two witnesses, two minutes, so I'll eliminate the third witness that we had. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you for this time, and I thank and respectfully ask for your I vote on behalf of over 5,500 parents statewide who have voiced their strong support of this bill. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. And before we go to your witnesses in support, uh, Madam Secretary, I noticed the presence of a quorum. If you could call the roll. O'Donnell. Here. O'Donnell here. Chavez. Here. Chavez here. Kim. Here. Kim here. McCarty. Here. McCarty here. Santiago. Thurman. Weber. Here. Weber here. And we do have a quorum, and we can go to our first witness. Um, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dr. Kelly Sandman Hurley, and I am here to talk about what really is a civil rights issue, and that's getting kids with dyslexia the education they deserve. Dyslexia affects one in five children, which is 20% of the students in our education system. This means that in every classroom from kindergarten to 12th grade, it's a child and probably two or three who has dyslexia. And to be sure, dyslexia is real. The science community has collected a tremendous amount of evidence about how dyslexia manifests in the brain, how it manifests in the classroom, the genetic component of dyslexia, but more importantly, we know what type of instruction works for students with dyslexia, and we know that early screening and identification will prevent these children from experiencing reading and spelling failure. This intervention is a multi-sensory, explicit, systematic investigation of the structure of the English language, which is implemented by someone who is trained not only in the strategies of this type of intervention, but who also understands why a student with dyslexia needs this type of intervention. However, this intervention is only 50% of the solution. This is not new information. It has been available to educators for over 15 years. In the SELPA opposition later, letter, they stated that they do not think it's appropriate to test for letter and word reversals in early grades because those types of mistakes are developmentally appropriate. And we agree with them. Early screening should not include assessment of reversals because that is not how to screen for dyslexia. And even a cursory Google search of dyslexia would have informed them of this point. The SELPA letter highlighted the very reason we need this bill including, in, by including one of the most pervasive and easiest, easiest myths to debunk about dyslexia. The CTA's letter was equally fruitful with misconceptions about this bill and dyslexia. They stated that they believe students should have the right to the developmentally appropriate curriculum, and again, we completely agree. However, if a child has dyslexia and cannot read, how are they supposed to access that curriculum? They also expressed concern regarding the possible over-identification of children with dyslexia. This bill expressly requires that teachers receive the training to properly identify those students, and we fail to see the downside to identifying and remediating children early before they experience academic failure. CTA also mentioned that there is a system to identify these children for special education that is currently working, and we respectfully and strongly disagree with this statement. Both CTA and SELP have unintentionally strengthened our argument for the need for this bill by magnifying and highlighting the irresponsible lack of awareness of what dyslexia is, how and when it can be identified, and blatantly supported the wait to fail approach. And I will just leave you with one last thought from Dr. Sally Shaywitz, who states when it comes to dyslexia, we don't have a knowledge gap, we have an Thank action you. gap. Here, uh, the, our, our next witness. Two minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Holly Snyder, and I've been a kindergarten teacher for the last 12 years, but not once, never, while training to be a teacher or working as a teacher educating California's youth have I been taught about dyslexia. The truth is that my knowledge of dyslexia was born the day my son's second grade teacher told me she thought he was dyslexic. While I was searching for any reason at all that his reading never moved past the laborious pace of a beginning reader, the signs of dyslexia were there all along. I didn't recognize them. His teachers before second grade didn't recognize them. We didn't recognize them because teachers are not informed or educated on dyslexia. This is unacceptable. Our children deserve more than those who don't even know what dyslexia is making decisions about their education. They deserve more than the CTA, CSBA, and SELPA writing letters of opposition to this bill where they clearly state one thing. They have no idea what dyslexia is and how it affects our children. These organizations would lead you to believe we already have a great system in place to reach these children. This simply isn't true. The battle I faced to get my son help was long and heartbreaking. His school told me they couldn't test for dyslexia. Second grade was too young to assess him for a learning disability, and he had to fail first. 
Instead of immediate remediation in the midst of his final years of explicit reading instruction, he was asked to continue in the same intervention program that had already failed him. He was seven years old and they were already giving up on him. A teacher who sat on the side, other side of the IEP table countless times was brought to tears by a team unwilling to help my child. They openly denied my son's disability. It took me an entire year to get an IEP for a child whose intelligence placed him in the 97th percentile but was reading below the 5th percentile. CTA stated that students should have access to a curriculum that prepares them for further elementary education, but this is not happening. We know there are evidence-based reading programs that will help our dyslexic children learn, but we are, have not allowed our teachers to access them. We're asked to teach 100% of our students each year with the means and knowledge to only reach 80%. They might argue that creating an assessment tool to identify dyslexia in the early years of education would be harmful. I would argue that there's no better time to identify dyslexia and remediate long before the cost, long before the need, the restrictions or cost of a special education environment. Teachers desperately need the knowledge and tools to make all children successful. We need to understand dyslexia. We need to know how to identify it, and we need to know how to help. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if we could now have witnesses in support. Uh, if you could just come up and state your name, affiliation, and position. No more than that with regard to the bill. Again, persons in support. My name is Mindy Luby from Sonoma. I'm a mother of a child with dyslexia, and I am in support. My name is Tracy Black Zaretsky. I'm the former president of the IDA branch of San Diego, and I'm a mom of a child with dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. My name is Debbie Salazar. I'm the mother of two dyslexics. I live in Fairfield, California, and I'm in support of AB 1369. My name is Tina Sidlow from San Jose, and these are my children, Tyler and Alicia. And we are all dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. My name is Cindy, and I'm a dyslexic student, and um, I live in San Francisco, and I support AB 39. My name's Teresa Lowe, and I'm from Tracy, California, and this is my son Joshua, and both of us are dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. My name is Jackie Deodo. This is my dyslexic daughter, Naomi, and I'm from Berkeley, and I'm in support of AB 1369. Hi, I'm Jennifer Tanner. I'm from Carlsbad, California. Um, I'm dyslexic, and I am the parent of a dyslexic child, and I support AB 1369. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stacy Cavagliari. I'm from San Diego. I'm dyslexic, and I have two children who are dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. Hi, I'm Jennifer Biang, and I'm from Fontana, California, and I am dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. Hi, my name is Kay Rice. I have a master's in education, teacher, administrator, uh, doing educational consulting on pro bono because of the only two years I've been back in California, the four districts I've encountered, not one teacher, not one administrator, not one special education teacher. And I know because I've asked them all specifically in the IEP and student study teams, has been able to tell me they've had training to work with these children. Thank you. Hello, my name is Scott Caswell. I'm from Oceanside, and I am in support of AB 1369. Thank you. Hi, my name is Heather Helfer. I live in Alamo. I have a child who's dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. Hi, my name is Reagan Helfer and I live in Alamo. I'm dyslexic and I support AB 1369. Hi, I'm Dylan. And I'm Jack. And, and we and do we support, support AB 1369. My name is Sonia Beers. I am from Oakland. I am a psychotherapist. I work with juvenile offenders and at-risk youth, and I see the effects of uh, un, un improperly addressed uh, l um, literacy every day in my work. Thank you. Hi, my name is Trisha Ford, and I'm from Riverbank, California, and I support AB 1369. 
My name is Ginger. I'm from Concord, California. I'm dyslexic. My father's dyslexic, and my daughter is dyslexic, dyslexic and I support AB1369. Hi, my Hi, my name is Liliana Jaramillo, and I live in Concord, and I support AB1369. My name is Gita Sokach. I live in Pleasant Hill, and I, my daughter is dyslexic, and I strongly support this assembly bill. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sonia Sainz. I'm a bilingual elementary teacher, and I support AB1369. This is my daughter. She has dyslexia. <laughs> Hello, my name is Orlando Sainz. I'm from Rancho Palos Verdes, and I support AB 1369. My daughter has dyslexia. Hello, my name is Haley Sainz. I live in Rancho Palos Verdes. I have dyslexia. I support AB 1369. Hi, my name is Sophia Granucci. I'm 10 years old. I live in Roseville, and I have dyslexia. I support AB 1369. My name is Lisa Granucci. I'm the mother of a child with dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. My name is Catherine Rich. I live in Elk Grove, and I have a son who's dyslexic, as well as several nieces and nephews, and I support AB 1369. My name is Heidi Taylor. I'm from Pleasant Hill, California. My daughter Molly has dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. My name is Shannon Seely. I'm from Aptos, and I have a dyslexic child, and I support AB 1369. Hi. My name is Suzanne Giller. I'm from San Ramon, and my son has dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. <clears throat> My name is Lisa Riggs, and I am from Redding, California. My son is dyslexic, and it runs in the family tree. I am a parent as well as an educator. On a regular basis, I am meeting kids who have graduated the K-12 through system, reading as third, fourth, and fifth graders. If they are brave enough to attend a community college, I am able to help them access disability services. But they come in with the lowest literacy ability that they have to start from basic skills classes. It's the first time they've been able to access assistive technology like Bookshare, which is a free service offered by the federal government. If we remediate them at a younger age, the gap is much closer to fill. But when we wait for them as an adult or an older child who has social emotional issues, it takes much longer. By then, they are shut down learners who may become our teen pregnancies, access welfare, be incarcerated, and the list goes on and on. Again, I am a parent, I am an educator, and I support AB 1369. Thank you for your time. Hello, I'm Rachel Abramovitz from Cupertino, and I have four dyslexic daughters, but I also run reading intervention programs in three elementary schools, one in Sunnyvale and two in San Jose, where we have 37 volunteer uh, did, tutors. You, at this point, we just need you to state your name, okay. your affiliation, and your position on the bill. Okay. We've got a lot of people behind you. Okay. We've got 85 kids, dyslexic students that yeah, were training. Yeah, I know that. And I'm very aware of that, but I need you to state your name, and your I affiliation, and your position on the bill. And I support wholeheartedly this Ma bill. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashley Judkins, and I'm from Oakland, and I support 
A B thirteen sixty nine. I'm Cynthia Judkins, Ashley's mom from Oakland, and I support A B thirteen sixty nine. I'm Karen Rosenquist. I'm from San Anselmo. Um, this is my son, Liam. He's nine, and he's dyslexic. I support AB 1369. Hello. My name is Ty, and I have dyslexia, and I support reading f from 1869. Good job. Hi, I'm Ann Borchers, and I am a teacher in Rockland, California, and taught there for 13 years. I have a grandchild with dyslexia, and I have a daughter with dyslexia, and I support 801369. My name is Elaine Bush. I live in Martinez. I'm a special education teacher and intervention specialist for the Mount Diablo Unified School District. I strongly support AB 1369. Hi, I'm Chaya Sakajian. I'm a parent of a very bright dyslexic son whom the public schools have failed, and I drove 700 miles from Laguna Niguel to support AB 1369. Hi, my name's Laura DePole. I'm from Diablo, California. I'm a volunteer reading tutor for low-income foster youth, and I support AB 1369. Hi, I'm Kathy Futterman. I'm a lecturer and university supervisor at Cal State East Bay. I'm also a public special educator. I'm a member of CTA. I'm a member of the California Faculty Association. And I'm from Concord, California. And I strongly support AB 1369. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michelle Anderson. I'm from Rockland, California. This is my daughter, Elizabeth. She's 13. She's dyslexic. And I str strongly support AB 1369. Thank you. Hi, I'm Judy Rising. I'm from Capistrano Beach. And I am, uh, had 36 years of teaching K through 2 in the public schools. Was always told dyslexia did not exist as well as I am the uh, Literate Nation State Captain and also the Vice President of the Board of the Tri-Counties Branch of IDA, the International Dyslexia Association, and I support strongly AB 1369. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shay Phillips. I am from Alameda, California. These are my two dyslexic sons, and I support AB 1369. Hi, I'm Martha Bruder from San Francisco. I'm dyslexic, and my kids, too, back there are, too. And I support um, AB 1369. Thank you. My name is Brian Phillips. I live in Pinole, California. My son, Colton. We both support AB 1369. My name is Kate Halfon from Martinez, California. This is my dyslexic son, and I support AB 1369. Hello, I'm Karen Halfon, and I support AB 1369. Hello, my name is Nicole Bauer. My son is dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. My name is Patty Norser. I'm from Rockland, California. I'm a kindergarten teacher and a parent of a child with dyslexia, and I support this bill. And I'm Nicole Masomi. <laughs> I'm from Auckland, California. I'm a teacher and a parent of a dyslexic child, and I support this bill. Hi, my name is Teresa Helen. I'm from Sacramento, and I am a teacher in Rockland, and I support AB 1369. And I'm Heather Lauer. I'm a kindergarten teacher with Rockland Unified School District, and I also support this bill. My name is Christine Matheny. My son is severely dyslexic. He was the third witness you don't get to hear from today, but I am in support of this bill, Assembly Bill 1369. 
Hi, my name is Max Matheny, and I am severely dyslexic. So I've been in special ed program for four years, and I support this bill. Hello, my name is Jennifer Varis. I live in Modesto, and I'm a mother of a dyslexic child who's right behind me, and I support AB 1369. Thank you. My name is Giovanna Veris. I live in Modesto. I am a student with dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. Hi, my name is Karen Bissett. I live in Oakdale. Um, I am a grandmother, Giovanna's grandmother. Uh, she's dyslexic, and I support AB 1369. Hello, my name is Diana MacDonald. I am here on behalf of the California State PTA, and we are in strong support of AB 1369. Thank you so much. Ma'am, ma come forward. Please, if we could hold our applause. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Susan Horning. I'm from Walnut Creek. This is a picture of my son who has dyslexia. He's 16 years old. I'm also a special education advocate, and I have numerous clients that have dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. I'm Allison. I'm 16, and I'm a student from Atherton, and I, and I have dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. Hi, I'm, I'm Robin Taylor from Atherton, and I'm Allison's mother. I'm a former special ed teacher, licensed in California, and I support AB 1369. Hello, my name is Sarah Jane Gould. I'm from San Francisco. I am the wife, the mother, the cousin, the aunt of dyslexic individuals, and I support AB 1369. Hi, I'm George Gould. Um, I'm a dyslexic individual, and I support AB 1369. Hello, my name is Annette Fuller. I'm a wife and mother of two dyslexic kids, and my husband is dyslexic as well. I have a, a business where I correct dyslexia in kids and adults, and I support the bill. Thank you. Hello, my name is Irene. I'm from Upland. This is my 11-year-old daughter named Cambria. She is dyslexic as well as my husband, and I support AB 1369. Thank you. My name is Whitney Cowing. I live in Oakland. I am dyslexic, and my son is also dyslexic, and we support this bill. Hi, my name is Sarah Marshak. I'm from Oakland, and this is my daughter Poppy, who is six and is dyslexic, and we fully support AB 1369. Hello, my name is Erin Farber. I am a resident of Marin County and a credentialed teacher here in California. I do not have children with dyslexia, but I see it all the time, and there is a need for this bill. I support it. Good afternoon, my name is Dennis Norton. I am a retired school teacher of 33 years in the San Francisco Unified School District as a teacher and administrator. Uh, I was an adjunct faculty at the University of San Francisco in the teacher education department, and I fully support this bill. Thank you. Hi, my name is Terry Osling. I'm from Roseville. My son has dyslexia, and I support AB 1369. I'm Faith Osling. My grandson suffers from dyslexia. I'm from Reading, and I fully support the bill. My name is Bridget Nevin. I'm from Novato, California. I am a mother of dyslexic children, and I support AB 1369. My name is Shelby Nevin. I live in Novato, California. I have a dyslexic brother and a sister and I support AB 1369. Hello, my name is Sebastian Hayes, and I have a sister with special needs. I support it's AB 1469. 
Hi, I'm Claire Hazlett from Pleasant Hill. I am a mother of a special needs child. I'm also a volunteer reading coach working with struggling readers, and I absolutely 100% support AB 1369. My name is Toby Meyer, and I'm with Decoding Dyslexia California, and I am here representing the millions of children that were unable to come in today to support AB 1369. Thank you. Any further support? Uh, we will now hear, we have two, uh, two witnesses from the opposition. You come forward, please. And Mr. Frazier, I'd like to commend you on the supporters of this bill. Very succinct. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. <laughs> I had to give him a little room. Uh, you may proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Isabel Garcia, representing the California Teachers Association. We first want to thank the committee for your extraordinary hard work on this bill. And we want to thank the author for bringing this topic forward. And it's a, it's a very important issue because the whole educational community does not want any child to not succeed in schools. And we also want to recognize the tremendous witnesses and the sponsors for showing up and, and, and with a strong voice about the importance of the issue. Um, CTA um, still has an oppose on the bill. We, the two um, amendments that the author has accepted, the first one is the um, adding to section, the Title V regulations that are supposed to be in alignment with the federal regulations um, by adding phonological processes to the definition of uh, psychological processes which determines your eligibility for specific learning disability. Um, we believe that because the regs just had a, a three-year review um, and have just been updated and some of these concerns were brought forward and were not incorporated, we're concerned that by doing that now, um, we're then exceeding federal law and federal regulations. So that's the first issue. And the second issue is that uh, under the same regulations in another part of it where it talks about eligibility for language or speech disorders, our members feel that the phonological uh, process it belongs more for in that area as opposed to specific learning disability uh, definition. So that was the concern with that component. And then the second one about directing the superintendent to um, take dyslexia as a separate category and do all the things that, that are enumerated, we're concerned about um, because we don't do that for any other um, category, not for autism, not for uh, brain trauma or, or anything like that. And while it's well-intentioned, we're just concerned about, about the expansive role of having the superintendent do that, um, not that it wouldn't be helpful. Um, so for those reasons, we're still opposing the bill because we feel that the issues that have been identified that are occurring at the local level, whether it's under identifying pupils with dyslexia with the, di the early diagnostic assessments, whatever that is, we need to address that as, as well as the support systems, whether if you're not eligible for special education and related services, but you are identified with dyslexia, you know, how can we better uh, intervene and, and, and meet the child's needs? So we want to continue the conversation and the dialogue about how we can identify best practices at the local level that can be helpful in Thank that you. area. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is David Tostin. I'm here as a member of and representing the SELP Administrators of California. And I also echo, echo the sentiments regarding the appreciation for the author as well as the committee uh, in focusing on this issue. I'd also like to acknowledge the young public speakers in the room um, for participating in the process at a very early age. Each of them were phenomenal. Uh, the Association of SELPA Directors uh, still continue to have an opposition to the bill that's currently in print. Um, we appreciate the committee's efforts and the author's efforts um, to mitigate our concerns, and we believe that the movement is in the right direction. 
while we've not had an opportunity to formally rev review all of the amendments, um, we still have concerns uh, regarding developing systems or expectations that exceed IDEA as it relates to the diagnosis or identification of students with specific learning disabilities, um, which was noted earlier includes uh, dys dyslexia after the growth and development uh, components have been ruled out. We believe that adding these new mandates would create a separate um, identification and response system that would only further diminish the limited resources that schools have to meet the needs of all students. Lastly, I would like to highlight the work of the statewide task force that recently issued a report that had a number of recommendations um, that we believe will strengthen the system as it relates to teacher preparation, um, but also the inclusion of evidence-based practices uh, that would increase our capacity um, to identify challenging situations early and provide the appropriate response. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, the remaining uh, witnesses if you could just uh, state your name, affiliation, and position on the bill. Erica Hoffman on behalf of the California School Boards Association. We greatly appreciate the work of your committee staff, of the author's office. It moves tremendously in the correct direction. I can't wait to see the language when it's in print, and I hope to continue this conversation. Thank you very much. Dr. Camille Giamedi May, Assistant Superintendent for Yolo County SELPA, representing SOAR Coalition. Again, I uh, would like to echo um, my colleague. Uh, thank you to the uh, members of this committee, also for the amendments, also to our author. For, uh, with, Again, and your, we, to your, your name, affiliation? Camille Giamedi May. Sorry about, oh, I have a name. Yeah, um, but again, thank you for everything. We'd like to continue working with the author on these amendments. Thank you. Is there? Any other members of the public that wish to state their opposition? Uh, seeing none, we'll bring it behind the dais. And I just say to you, Mr. Frazier, I think what I heard 1990 was the last time the, there was a significant visit on this topic from the legislature. So I appreciate you bringing it up and appreciate the speakers and their passion. It really came through today. Uh, these are parents concerned about their kids and kids, in fact, who are uh, affected by this. So again, I very much appreciate you caring about California's children. With that, uh, members of the uh, committee, Mr. Chavez. <clears throat> so, Mayor Frazier, thank you very much for bringing this bill forward, and I'd like to thank all the parents and the children who c came here. I noted some of them from my district down in San Diego, so thank you for coming up. Um, we know through all the hearings that we sit through that the first three years of education is critical for the success of a child. In fact, we often hear this statement that you can tell the dropout rate at third grade and start planning prisons. And that's just a terrible, terrible uh, relationship that we need to break. The other thought I have is that when I researched this, the one in five that are at some form is dyslexia, I think that society cannot afford to lose 20% of its creative class. We just cannot accept that. That my own experience, as some of you know, as a Marine, uh, one of the finest officers I had worked for me when we were overseas, uh, we were talking one time, and this is an artillery and a lot of different numbers. Um, he, he, we were looking at some things and maps, and then he told me, he says, you know, I'm dyslectic. Here's a Marine officer who's dealing with numbers, who's commanding Marines. We're overseas on a ship, and he's dyslectic. And I've watched him through the years, and I can tell you he ended up retiring as a Marine colonel. Obviously a very capable, competent man. Having met his parents, I'm sure that he received the best education he could. And we are a better country because he was able to live with uh, dyslexia. So I have a, a couple of questions I'm wondering from the people that were against this about, well, we have federal law and regulations that we need to look at. Uh, to the CTA and the people saying that, I just have to say bunk. Because, yeah, bunk. So the, uh, we all the time up here in California go against federal law, sometimes on immigration, sometimes on climate issues, often on issues that we always like to say, California is a leader. If the federal government is not going to get on board, we're going to lead in the direction that needs to lead. So um, 
I disavow that argument. Your second argument as far as the expansive role, I actually have the language that was taken by the maker of the bill. And what grabs me is this, the superintendent of public instruction shall develop program guidelines for dyslexia. And I'll go down to the important portion here. A structural approach, which is evidence-based, which you use as the reason not to do this, multi-sensory, direct, explicit, structured, and sequential. So clearly there was a lot of thought in this amendment to go forward, and it clearly gives the good guidance to the superintendent structure to go forward. Now the right direction, and this is a challenge that I think, well, I'm going to be here next year, and I'm actually going to be looking to make sure we do this. Because when you look at this later on, it says, in developing these guidelines, the superintendent shall consult with teachers, administrators, other educational professionals, medical professionals, parents, parents. No later than the beginning of 2017-18 calendar year, this program and guidelines to be completed. Well, we know, just as the chairman does, having been an educator himself and myself seven years in it, if you're going to institute something in the fall of 16, you need to have that in the spring. If you're going to do it at 17, you've got to have it in the spring of the year before to prepare teachers, to get the material out. You don't just drop it on them before they go to school. So essentially, within the next 12 months, we need to have all this done. So I would ask all parents, uh, when we see this, hopefully it's going to pass, but we all need to wa watch this very closely in your communities to make sure they're doing exactly what they say they're going to do. And if they're not, I would ask you to let me know, since I'm going to be around on the Education Committee, to assure that we do do this, and I see Mr. Torlakson all the time. So we will follow through with this guidance. Um, the last statement is, I think this is in the right direction. I had read this bill earlier. It, originally, it was a lot smoother and cleaner with the every three, every year looking at a student. I thought it was appropriate. I guess we've managed to go to this. But this is only a step in the right direction. I'll be supporting it. Um, it's important that we do this. My last word is, why is it important? As a society, we cannot afford to lose 20% of our creative society. I'd ask all our members to please support this bill. Thank you very much for Ms. Frazier for bringing it forward. Thank you, Mr. Has any other members of the committee wish to comment? Uh, seeing none, Mr. Frazier, you may close. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And again, um, you as an educator uh, understand the value, and I appreciate your understanding and helping me uh, move this bill along, and I'm hoping that it's successful today. And acknowledging all the supporters that have been here today, um, representing their family or their, their children, uh, we have to uh, be a rec recognize that there is no tomorrow. We have to start today. And I'll, look at all the children that we have missed since 1990. So with this, uh, I really do uh, respect the committee's judgment, and I ask for your I vote passionately. Again, thank you, Mr. Frazier, for bringing this issue, this issue again to the forefront. Uh, Madam bill. Secretary, if you, yeah, I need, it's moved and seconded. Madam Secretary, if you call the roll, please. The motion is do pass with amendments to the Appropriations Committee. O'Donnell? Aye. O'Donnell, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Kim? Aye. Kim, aye. McCarty? Aye. McCarty, aye. Santiago? Aye. Santiago, aye. Thurmond? Aye. Thurmond, aye. Weber? Aye. Weber, aye. It's out. Seven to zero. Seven to zero, the bill passes. Good job.